What's the good word, Josh? Your boy DKB here. We're breaking down day three of New York Jets training camp. We're still not in pads yet, but two out of the three practices back to back now for the offense. They're starting to get the better at the defense, which is really exciting to see because it has been a very consistent theme that the defense wears out the offense throughout the majority of OTAs, mini camp training camp uh, and then of course outperforming them during the regular season and holding their own so very excited to see that the the talent that we brought in returning Aaron Rodgers Tyrod Taylor being here even to a degree having you know guys like Andrew Peasley in the building have helped so much with being able to get the most out of these training camp sessions so with that said let's dive into some of the uh, generics here as usual injury updates Xavier Gibson has been advised that he'll be out for one to two weeks potentially some kind of leg issue I would imagine it's going to be something with the ankle if not maybe like a, a I don't know, a bone bruise, maybe like some kind of knee sprain or something like that, right? Minor enough if the the one two week time frame is uh, the accurate prognosis there. Then we have Brandon Eccles who ended up leaving early our cornerback, which means we're going to see additional reps from guys like Quantez Diggers, from guys like Nehemia Shelton that we signed who had a solid day today, uh, Miles Jones, uh, Shamar Bartholomew with some of the UDFA guys that we have back there. Jake Hansen, guard, uh, a lot of people expected him to make the 53-man roster from some of the projections I've seen. He'll be out a couple of weeks, which means there's going to be some additional exposure to UFL guard Cole Lovato. Um, and we'll see how that works out in his favor, right? Uh, you know, there's the reason the saying goes, um, the best asset or, you know, the best skill you can have is, uh, you know, being present, being able to stay out there on the field and be an active participant. So his roster spot could be shaky if we end up feeling strong about, uh, you know, the backup guard situation, taking a look at some of these other players. Tyron Smith had himself a vet day, which means Olu Fashanu got his first official start of the offseason at left tackle. Actually, let me backtrack. They may, that may not be 100% true, but Tyron Smith's um, uh, revised you know, schedule for training uh, is going to allow Olu Fashanu to see more starts throughout the offseason. Uh, and I heard that he went out there and did pretty well, right? Had himself um, you know, a solid day against the likes of Jermaine Johnson. Went out there and opened up some pretty big holes for Brees Hall facing the likes of Will McDonald. So excited to hear about him. And then the return of AVT, Elijah Vera Tucker coming back in at right guard. We've heard everybody mention how elite he is when he's put into this offense and he can finally just settle into a position and I think I've heard him say once or twice that right guard is his preferred spot out of the you know two that he's played uh, previously so we're hoping he can remain here he will be on a pitch count when it comes to team drills so we're going to see him out there but they're not just going to recklessly let him uh, you know wear himself back out and then we have some other interesting updates right we have uh, Jeremy Rucker, who was shouted out as a very underrated player. And to be honest, I want to say he might be one of the, the top five playmakers uh, on the offensive side in training camp so far. Consistently getting the ball in plenty of team drills. And uh, I think it was yesterday where I called out. He ended up getting four straight passes from Rodgers in 7-on-7. Seven seven. So really excited for him. He seems like uh, he's taking to Aaron Rodgers' tutelage very strongly. Should be a, a dynamic duo with Tyler Conklin who's also been uh you know having a solid training camp then you have uh more heavy um positional drills were emphasized a little longer today uh, on day three of training camp from my understanding which means not as many reps during team drills but still enough uh for Salah to be able to highlight the fact that we've been running more plays offensively than maybe we've seen in previous years as well and he um he uh, acquiesced that to a, a lot of the fact that we're in year two. People are more comfortable. A lot less uh, teaching the 101 of uh, the offense, if you will, and more so just being able to coach up technique and different things of that nature. And then an interesting tidbit I saw that Garrett Wilson's been kind of getting some special attention from Sean Jefferson. 
I don't know if this is specific to G5, but basically that when, uh, you know, special team drills and things are going on, people have seen them off to another drill continuing to work on, uh, you know, technique and things like that. And obviously the connection seems like it's strong right out of the gate with uh, some of the comments that we've heard from Garrett Wilson about Sean Jefferson and, you know, his time being a great player and the connection of just having that former player coach uh, kind of aspect to it. But to dive into the field work as usual, Rodgers, another elite day, very minimal balls that touched the floor and generally not his fault. Went six of eight for two touchdowns and 11 on 11s. Perfect 404 and seven on sevens. And again, uh, it's not just the fact that he's able to make sure G5 is getting fed. He's uh, he's spreading it everywhere. The running backs are getting in. Um, the the you know depth pieces in the wide receiver room are being able to take advantage. So huge, huge, huge deal uh, having him back and healthy. Tyrod Taylor, he's had himself a, a pretty strong showing overall. Had himself a touchdown in red zone drills. Lazard continuing to make plays be a positive presence he had a big play in the middle highlight was that it was over sauce gardner who was draped all over him um and of course rogers was the one delivering the pass so uh <laughs> based on what i would have saw last season i would have put money on the fact that rep up lazard versus sauce 10 out of 10 times sauce gardner can hold him to zero catches um so i'm very very excited about this element of uh, him being able to make plays against the likes of sauce gardner Kenny Yaboa had himself a big catch down the sideline uh, via Andrew Peasley on the third string unit. There was a note that I saw from uh, Robbie Sabo, actually, that uh, I think it's Sabo, excuse me. But nonetheless, that uh, Zach Koontz has been getting more reps uh, in like the second to third string um, uh, territory than maybe initially expected especially because he didn't really have any standout moments whatsoever during OTA. So something to keep an eye on, um, especially when pads are getting ready to come on. I know I've been, uh, I've seen some improvement from the blocking uh, with some of the, the videos that uh, people have been able to throw out there. So just uh, keep an eye on that battle. Kenny Yabo is not a lock for tight end three at the moment. Um, Jamie and Sherwood had himself a forced fumble of Isaiah Davis in seven on seven. So to my knowledge from the running back two battle, uh, Isaiah Davis has committed the first mistake so far out of the two young backs. Conklin had himself a red zone touchdown versus uh, uh uh, in large thanks to Rodgers, Ruckert had himself a touchdown in the red zone uh, by virtue of Tyrod Taylor. And then the most surprising player that probably stood out the most on the offensive side was Malik Taylor, right? This is a guy that I've likened to uh, Jeff Smith, right? Uh, just the Jets always seems to find a receiver or two that always balls out during the offseason, right? A guy that stands out during OTAs, a guy that stands out during preseason games, and then ultimately if they do make the roster, you don't really get that that same big play uh, ability, right? So not the same Malik Taylor is in that territory, but we've had seen him shine uh, for extended periods of time during previous offseasons. We'll see if he can parlay that into making the roster, but a touchdown in 7-on-7s seven seven for him, a touchdown in the red zone, even had a particularly impressive play where he out right uh, decimated stiggers from our understanding uh, on a particular route with Xavier Gibson being out we're going to see a lot of these guys someone that a lot of people are expecting to hear more of with Xavier Gibson's absence is Malachi Corley and we may need to pump the brakes right solid double solid double down during his press conference to highlight that he's still raw even though they're seeing improvements and uh, so far to date you know that's accurate right he's been rarely targeted Rogers highlighted, uh, you know, giving him um, um, immediate feedback on what he's seeing during reps, even when he's not, uh, the, you know, the quarterback uh, executing those plays. Because when he's there, he wants to make sure that he knows what uh, Rodgers expects from him. So we'll see if he can step up uh, in any capacity. Pad should be on pretty soon. So I'll initially mention Saturday that may get pushed back a little bit, but we'll see what happens there. Peasley had his, easily the worst, uh, you know, 
time so far of his training camp. Three interceptions on the day. They went to Jalen Key, Jackson Sermon, the linebacker, which many people think could be a surprise uh, 53-man roster uh, addition. And Nehemia Shelton, who we re-signed, I want to say, earlier this week. Um, And then to wrap things up, uh, you know, Lecky Fotu and Tack McKinley, they shared the sack today. Lecky Fotu particularly to me has been very impressive because – He hasn't had a down practice so far uh, since we returned for training camp. Actively engaged uh, in run defense, and you know we're seeing that bit of pass rush pop, um, which I've heard the likes of like Jets X Factor mention uh, on during film breakdown. Right, that he was a guy that could make a unexpected. Not seamless transition, but uh, put up maybe some better production uh, than you'd expect for, again, kind of the big guy. And for what it's worth, we've seen that last year out of Al Woods, right? Uh, The sacks may not have reflected it, but uh, to me, it looked like he was being able to impact the game when he was out there in a pass rush capacity, getting in the backfield on a number of occasions making a quarterback have to step out from the middle of the field. Um, so very excited to see Lecky Fotu and uh, maybe, you know, press to be a heavier part of that internal rotation and take some uh, snaps away from Javon Kinlaw, who by all accounts has had a pretty quiet training camp so far. So um, ultimately, let me know what you guys think. Again, I, I think the highlight for me is that the offense isn't just holding their own against the defense now uh, with three days of practice. We're actually seeing them be able to beat out uh, the defense in uh, each um in each, I want to say division, but uh, you know, first string versus first string, second versus second, third versus third. Uh, there's guys that are stepping up and, and finding a way to make plays and execute. So, super excited. Final piece of news that just hit me that I forgot, and I don't remember the names, but uh, we brought in a quarterback, and I think we brought in a wide receiver for uh, tryouts as well. Um, so, just keep in mind, maybe this was in light of Andrew Peasley's terrible practice. Can't recall the timing of it all, but the Jets may not be settled in on their third string quarterback competition. Um, and from the wide receiver room standpoint, um, maybe they're already looking to replace one of these depth pieces. Um, haven't heard from some of the undrafted free agents um, that, that uh, you know, we broke down earlier during the offseason when we signed them. So. Who knows what will happen. The Jets are still scouring the league for talent, though, which is the, uh, the positive news here. But let me know what you guys think, and I'll catch you again. Peace.